I don't need this. You guys can have that shirt. I don't need to work anymore. I'm rich. I'm, I'm going on vacation. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. We post videos daily, so if you don't want to miss an upload, consider giving this video a thumbs up if you're a fan of Pawn Stars. Join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on. But also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutouts. And we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Pretty much since it first aired in July 2009, History Channel's Pawn Stars has been the network's most popular show, and the main reason for its success is probably the show's cast. By far the most popular cast member is Chumley, who is usually the goofy one around the world-famous gold and silver pawn shop, and supplies viewers with entertaining and memorable moments. However, his lack of knowledge in certain areas combined with his gullibility and trustfulness have led him to make some pretty bad mistakes, and in today's video we're going to look at 5 times Chumley got screwed on Pawn Stars. In the episode Playing Crazy of the very first season of Pawn Stars, Chumley bought a piece of fake art for 300 bucks, a purchase which understandably left the old man pretty angry and prompted him to say that Chumley shouldn't deal in art since he barely knows how to tie his own shoes because Shumley felt that he had been working in the shop long enough to buy some cool stuff like art, Rick decided to give him a lesson in how to distinguish fake etching from a real one. He started by telling Chum how the artist first takes a copper plate and then puts a layer of wax over it which is called a ground. After that he takes a metal pen and writes or rather draws through the wax. Once he has finished the picture, he pours acid over the whole thing which etches into copper where there is no wax to protect it, hence the name etching. In the next step, the artist puts ink on the picture that can now be seen on the copper plate and then takes a piece of paper and presses the copper into it so that the picture is transferred to that piece of paper. Based on this process, the first thing Chumley should be looking for in an etching is whether the picture had been pressed into the paper, which will leave a dent in the paper where the copper plate was pressed into it with a great weight. And since the etching that Chum had bought didn't have a dent, he should have become skeptical right away, but instead of admitting his mistake, Chum now decided to claim that he had thought the discoloration on the paper was from the wax, but Rick was quick to point out that this was no excuse since he hadn't found out about the process until that moment. Rick then showed Chumley the brown marks that real etchings often have from the copper plates and told them that nothing else on the paper should be brown because that would point to poor quality paper that isn't acid free. To make the whole thing even more attractive to Chum, Rick offered him a day off if he could pass Rick's test and identify the real etching out of a selection of three pictures. Later on in the episode, Rick then gave Chumley three potential Salvador Dali etchings of which only one was real, and while Chumley reminded him of the day off he was promised, the old man threatened to give him the rest of his life off without pay if he didn't pass the test. I also get the day off if I get it right. If you get it wrong, I might give you the rest of your life off. Does that come with pay? <laughs> no. After noticing some indention on the first picture, Chum suspected that Rick and the old man might have done that to throw him off, so he took a closer look at the two other pictures before picking out the first picture as the re -letching. Luckily he made the right choice and was allowed to keep working at the world famous gold and silver pawn shop and we are pretty sure that no one will ever sell Chumley a fake etching again. Everyone knows that Chumley is not the brightest bulb in the box, which is exactly why Corey decided to play a little prank on his best friend in the episode One Way Ticket of Season 8. After Chum saw that there was a lot of money in the jackpot, he thought about getting a lottery ticket. A little bit later, Corey presented him with a scratch card, which Chumley eagerly scratched, winning $10,000 and immediately leaving the gold and silver pawn shop to go on vacation. $10,000! It's $10,000! However, Corey then revealed to Rick and the old man that the ticket was fake and from a party store, and he then spent the rest of the day trying to reach his buddy to stop him from spending his alleged winnings. At some point, Chumley texted him that he had just purchased a ticket to the Cayman Islands to avoid paying taxes on the money, and at that point, Big Ha started to feel really guilty about the prank and came clean. Although Chum sounded pretty shocked on the phone, he later came to the shop and revealed that he hadn't fallen for Corey's lie at all, but simply used the opportunity to take a day off. So Chumley may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but he still isn't fooled that easily. 
Shumley doesn't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed on Paw Stars, and he proved why people see him that way in the episode Face the Music, where he was minding the shop by himself when he was offered a vintage Gibson mandolin. Seller Market found the instrument at a yard sale and didn't know much about it, but was hoping to get enough money for it to take his family on a trip. Thank you. Unfortunately, Chumley didn't know much about it either, but did notice that the sticker inside the mandolin was a newer one, which meant that the instrument wasn't a vintage Gibson. After saying that Rick didn't like it when he made big deals alone, he also pointed out that his boss didn't like losing out on easy money either, so Chum decided to take the risk and go 500 bucks over his $1,000 spending limit. However, when he took the mandolin to expert Jesse Amoroso, he learned that the A model with the Gibson on the headstock in the old script was one of the thousands of fakes that can be found around the United States. It did have the decals on the edges, and through one of the F-holes you could even see the stamp of the modern script Gibson logo, but besides that, it was very different from the originals. The Cowtown guitarist shop owner told Chumley that the mandolin was fake as hell, and said that it might be worth around a hundred bucks. I hate mandolins. Shumley is the only non-family cast member, but since he has been Corey's best friend since their early childhood, he still has a special place in the Harrison's heart. Even though he might not be the smartest guy on Pawn Stars, his immaturity and happy-go-lucky attitude bring a lot of humor to the show, which is why fans love him so much. And so do the Harrisons, which explains why they have stuck with him despite various mistakes Chumley has made over the years that have cost the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop quite a bit of money. Although most people on Paw Stars sell their items, the Harrisons also have customers who just want to pawn something. As you know, when you pawn an item, you leave something with the pawnbroker who will give you a loan of the item and can eventually sell it if you don't come back to repay the money and reclaim your possession within the agreed period. The loans you get on pawned items will normally be way below the actual value of an item, which leaves a potentially great profit margin for the pawn shop, but can also mean a huge loss for the shop if something goes wrong like it did in the Harrison store more than a decade ago. In an interview with the Huffington Post, Big Hoss revealed that Chumley's biggest error in the shop happened before the show even started. After someone pawned their stand-up base to the shop for $700, Chumley leaned it against the shelf and walked away, but the base fell and shattered into pieces. However, instead of telling his bosses about accidentally breaking the instrument, he decided to shove the pieces into a box and put the pawn number on the box as if nothing had happened. When the owner eventually came back to get the base, he obviously freaked out upon discovering it in pieces and the pawn shop had to pay the man the full value for it. Since it turned out to be a rare instrument, Rick ended up writing a check for $20,000. In a 2012 episode of the show, Chumley really wanted to purchase a 31-ton Robosaurus. In his opinion, it was something the Harrisons just had to have for their pawn shop, since they would never have to tow a car again. The machine that was built in the 80s is a transforming Tyrannosaurus Rex that can breathe fire and eat cars, trucks, and even small planes. The machine travels around in the form of a futuristic trailer and can transform into the Robosaurus in just two minutes. The Tyrannosaurus Rex can shoot 20-foot flames from its nose, and its jaws crush things with a staggering 28,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. The robotic dino can also lift 4,000 pounds, and has a voice that is powered by a 6,000 watt onboard system, while it is controlled by a specially trained pilot inside its cranium, who manipulates 18 hydraulic functions at the same time. The seller tried to convince Shumley and Corey of his money-making machine by claiming that they could earn up to $25,000 a day by renting or leasing it out for special events, like big giant demolition derbies. However, the seller was asking for $1 million, and Corey ignored the overly excited Shumley calling Robosaurus the biggest, most impractical thing he had ever come across, and it was definitely the right decision, as the last time the machine changed hands was at a classic car auction in Arizona in 2008, for the quote-unquote low price of $575,000. Seems like the owner wanted to make a few extra bucks in addition to all the cash that his money-making machine must have earned him already, but this time, the Paw Stars luckily avoided making a bad deal thanks to Corey, who was there to keep Chum from getting screwed over this time. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.